with Diane Sawyer and Charles Gibson. Tonight, young women, porn and profits, corporate America's secret affair. Good evening, Charlie is off tonight and I want to welcome you to this special primetime hour. We begin with a warning. Our subject tonight is pornography, a hardcore, triple X, hugely profitable reality in this country. And if it's not a topic you want to learn more about, now's the time to turn the dial. You may remember that a while back, some of us at primetime started asking a question. Who are the young women who walk in and decide that for the first time, they're going to have sex on camera? Without judging them, we wanted to know more. And the question began a journey in which we discovered that the legal age for these performers is 18 years old and that it's perfectly legal to film the scenes without any condoms. We also learned that very few of these young performers have any benefits or health care. And who is responsible? Well, tonight you're going to see that some of the most prestigious companies in America are making millions in profits from porn and hoping you won't notice. Though recently, the entire industry made the headlines when something so many people had feared happened. 11. There is turmoil tonight in the world of pornography. The health scare continues this morning. His adult film career is over. The that is the sound of a time bomb activity. exploding. News breaking last month that two adult sex performers have tested positive for HIV. One of them, Darren James, a star in several films. Fear and confusion sweep the industry. You're HIV positive, you need to be here, pal. Altogether, at least 53 people had been exposed directly or indirectly to the infected actors in just one month. You do the frightening math. Insiders say as many as 4,000 porn movies are shot each year in Los Angeles alone, with an average of four sex scenes a movie. And we're told in only 17% of the movies, like this one, the actors use condoms. So how does this high-risk business get its new talent? Let's go back three years ago when we followed dozens of young women arriving every week in Los Angeles. So many of them just teenagers taking the buses from Texas or Minnesota or Alabama. Someone's sister, someone's daughter, hoping to find a highway to a Hollywood dream. Two. Can you act? I don't know. You been in a high school play? Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's me winning a little plaque for 4 H. Most just want to become models, mainstream actresses. But how? We have some R-rated movies, quite a few, really. Uh -huh. This is Jim South. He runs the World Modeling Agency, recruiting girls for photo shoots. Now, you did understand that most of it is new. Mm -hmm. Arts the fanny just a little bit, and then giving a little smile. Nearly every girl we meet says she's okay with showing a little skin in a photo. After all, in this day and age, you see nude photos everywhere. And they're all hoping this could lead to the big break. We had a couple of people in a decent proposal. With mm -hmm. for yeah. And the money? Great. Now, if you're bikini, it's 100. Mm -hmm. If you're topless, it's 200. Okay. If it is centerfold, it's 5,000, and being the bond, we're off the Acapulco, right? <laughs> this is Julie from New Jersey, a teacher of emotionally disturbed children, who says she really needs some extra cash. Head down just a little bit, smile. Okay. And this is Samantha, an extremely beautiful young girl who wanted to be a fashion model, but a photographer suggested she go see Jim South. This is a winner here. She's going to go a long way. South, smooth, direct, casually introduces another new thought. How about Samantha appearing not in a nude photo, but in a film? She made 15, 20,000 in a month. And I'm not exaggerating. Huh? The transition from a photo to film seems like a small distinction. In fact, it's a giant fork in the road. Right away, Julie starts pulling out altogether. She says no. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, you're new to the adult business? Okay. The directors make no secret of their excitement when they get a brand new, young recruit. Yeah, so pretty. The new, hot, fresh talent is, is always better than the old years. <laughs> so many of the girls tell us that they imagine their first film work will be something pretty erotic. You can put your clothes back on. But for many of them, the morning after, regret. 
Angel, a girl from the Midwest who wanted to be a regular actress, says she let herself get lured in. She's desperate to get out. I don't want to do any more sex. Okay. That's fine. It's your line. The money, of course, is excellent. Jim South agrees to cancel Angel's next shoot, but the director makes it more difficult. He's just disappointed. He's not mad. He wants to know if you will do it for a thousand if he could get you out in two hours. Angel agrees to listen. There are people I don't want to find out about this. My family. She puts down the phone and walks away. But for all who leave, so many others stay. The average snapshot of the average person that walks through the front door is a young girl that is fresh off the bus from somewhere, usually the Midwest, that really thinks this is the back door to Hollywood. Now, the back door part would be correct. The Hollywood part, no. Sharon Mitchell of the Adult Industry Medical Health Care Foundation says so many of them are emotionally fragile. Yeah, you really are. Hey, my name is Jessica D. You'll also learn how one of the girls Jim South introduced into the business several years ago, a 24-year-old Czech actress named Jessica D, learned last month that she is on the HIV quarantine list. Will she be HIV positive or will she be okay? Of course they're going to be scared. You're looking at something that could kill you. And you'll also learn about another girl, frail, waif-like Lara from Montreal who wandered into porn, she says, to get money for school. Three months later, she pays a lifetime price. Who's going to want to marry me? Who's going to want to have a dog and kids with me, you know, in a house? No one. For the very first time. They lie to you all the time. Ona Z, she was a performer herself for 15 years, is now an executive in the industry advocating reform. You show up expecting to do one thing, and then you do something else, and you're in, you're in a trap because you've planned on the money that you're going to make. I'm like the one that they... Careers are, are pretty short. Ken Banish, president of the Erotic Network, one of the hundreds of companies cashing in on America's appetite for porn. I don't think that we can take responsibility for what we're doing to society. I think society is, is, is taking the entertainment community where it wants to go. In just three years, Banish says his erotic network, which distributes porn to cable, grew from about a million and a half households to last count over 35 million. Oh, stop! And it may surprise you to learn that sitting atop the profits pyramid in this industry are Fortune 500 companies keeping porn the secret in their corporate attic. Companies like Rupert Murdoch's News Corp, which includes Fox News with its conservative message. And there's Comcast, which put in a bid for Disney. Time Warner. Hotel chains like Marriott and Hilton. Later in the broadcast, you'll see what happens when we try to talk to these Fortune 500 companies and ask why they don't concern themselves with health benefits or protection for actors as young as 18. The person that packs the porn in a box in the warehouse is entitled to hepatitis B vaccines. But someone that's having unprotected anal sex, hmm. <laughs> there is no standard. They're not protected. They don't even have workman compensation. Former U.S. Surgeon General C. Everett Koop says the animals in regular movies are treated better than most performers in the billion-dollar world of porn. You have the animal rights people taking better care of cockroaches than they take care of people. So you're saying that, that they want it both ways. They want to be profiting from it, but they don't want to get involved. They don't want to get involved, and people don't care whether they get involved or not. You have to remember that even the people who enjoy looking at pornography have no sense of protection for them. To the contrary, industry experts say the profits lie in pushing performers to go further, do something newer, riskier. We are at 1,025, and right now... Take this film, a sex marathon, one woman having sex with hundreds of men in just 48 hours. They can't stand up. <laughs> Which thing. 